frantic desperation on a Kiev summer morning. People help with their bare hands at Ukraine's largest children's hospital. Even for a war-hardened city, this was a missile strike which broke the grueling rhythm of Russia's invasion. Some of the young patients were being treated for cancer, already fighting for their lives. They illustrate how these attacks don't discriminate. We were in the middle of surgery when the windows got shattered. The surgeon quickly covered the baby to save him. I want the world to stop this. These children are innocent. Tatiana had a near miss. We got here five minutes before it all started. Then the search for survivors stops for another missile alert. An underpass acts as a shelter this time. Residential buildings were also hit in Kyiv. Here, bodies were recovered. Other cities were also attacked. On a visit to neighboring Poland, President Zelensky promised a retaliation. Beyond any doubt, we are going to rebuild everything that these terrorists have destroyed. And beyond any doubt, we are going to respond to these savages from Russia. Everybody who was injured will get the necessary help and we pledge to work on bringing Russia to justice. Ukrainians often describe a daily weight on their shoulders. Sirens sound in cities like Kiev all the time. And occasionally explosions will follow and occasionally it's a big one. Now, you can see people singing as they're giving out water. Attacks like this don't really influence the battlefield, but what they are designed to do is terrorize and suppress the Ukrainian people. For a second time, rescue teams have to find cover because of another air alert. Only on this occasion, they sing the Ukrainian national anthem underground. A dark day for a city still defiant. James Waterhouse, BBC News, Kyiv.